we have uh, numbers to get started. So thank you, Alexis. Um, welcome everyone to our November um, Diversity Advisory Board meeting. It's good to see all your faces and happy uh, Native American Heritage Month. Um, we have a very important uh, night ahead of us with our DEI uh, annual report review, um, but we have some agenda items to get through first. Um, so with that, we'll just jump right in um, and take a look at our uh, meeting minutes from uh, October. Uh, does anybody have any comments on those? And if not, I will ask for a motion to approve October's meeting minutes. I have a motion. Thank you, Ahmed. Do I have a second? I second. Thanks, Teresa. All in favor? Any opposed? All right. Uh, October meeting minutes are approved. We'll, we'll move right along here to uh, public comment. Um, Alexis, I'm not sure we have anyone here for that, but I'll let you facilitate if we do. Sure, it looks like we have um, one person in attending. Um, so I'm worried I'm gonna pronounce your name wrong, but um, Rian, Rian, if you'd like to speak, go ahead and use the ran, raise hand feature or put something in the chat. Um, if not, you're welcome to just observe and listen. It looks like you would like to say something. So let me, get you in the space, giving me some extra instructions this time. Okay, go ahead. Oh, you're on mute. Hi, my name's Ryan, sorry. I, um, I'm i actually observing for um, my civic engagement class and at PSU. So um, I'm just here to kind of watch what you guys are doing and what you guys talk about and um, but I have no other further comments. I um, wasn't here for last month's meeting or anything. So um, about like public comment or anything. So just letting you guys know that I'm here. So. Thanks Ryan for introducing yourself and for, for being here tonight. Appreciate that. That is um, That was our only member of the public. So you can go ahead, Rachel. Awesome, thank you. Well, it looks like uh, we have Rihanna up tonight for cultural sharing. Are you ready to go, Rihanna? Yes, I am. Uh, I do need to share my screen. Um, let me see if I can do that. All right. Um, how do I do that? How do I do that, Adam? Hold on. Let me just get my tech support next to me. <laughs> All right. Hi. Uh, sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> can everyone see my screen? Just let me know if you can. Because I can't see you guys. It says you've started screen sharing, but we're not quite seeing it yet. Oh, okay. How do you do that then? Um, can you see it now? Mm. Not yeah. yet. You might try taking it down and putting it back up. Or Ahmed might have a suggestion. Yeah, do you have two screens? Um, no, just one screen. Okay, just see the priority for the screen maybe because, yes, now. Oh, you can see it now? Yes. Okay, cool, cool. <clears throat> Thanks. Yeah, I'm not very good at this. So. All right, so hi everyone. Um, good evening and happy Diwali to everyone who's um, celebrating Diwali. Um, so today I wanted to talk about a cultural religious practice which um, Muslims are obliged to perform at least once in their lifetime and that's um, Hajj, the ritual is Hajj. Hajj is actually the five, fifth pillar of, of Islam. There are five pillars, one is belief in God, second is fasting, charity, prayer and then Hajj is the fifth pillar. So <clears throat> Hajj is really a pil pilgrimage to Mecca um, which a Muslim, like I said, is expected to perform at least once in their lifetime if they have the financial means and the physical strength, because it's quite taxing on, you, on your health. And it, it is quite a physical endurance as well. 
So um, the purpose of Hajj really is uh, one, like I mentioned, it's one of the pillars of Islam. And second, it's, um, it's, it's like um, an ultimate act of worship. It sort of cleanses the soul, brings purity and hope and renewal to the soul. And so by strengthening you know, each, each individual faith, it also strengthens the unity of the people that follow Islam. So, hold on, right. Can you see that second screen now? Yes. So, so, so the first thing you do, just let me know because I'm sort of juggling with this a little bit. So the first thing you do when you go for Hajj is you travel to Mecca by plane, land or sea. Um, and, you know, that's the way people normally get there. In the olden days, you travel by camel and by, by, by ship and even walk. So Mecca is really, it's a city situated in the western Saudi Arabia, as you can see there. It's sort of inland from the Red Sea. Um, it's one of the holiest cities in Mecca because our Prophet Muhammad was, was born in Mecca and he's the one that spread the faith. The famous landmark, so what you're seeing here is, um, you're seeing a picture of the famous mosque in Mecca, which is called the Great Mosque. And inside the Great Mosque, there's a black box, which is called the Kaaba. So, and that was built by um, Abraham and his son Ismail. Um, so, um, yeah, so these pictures are pre-COVID and post-COVID. So pre-COVID, normally you get 3 million people visiting Mecca every year during the month of Hajj. And post-COVID, they restricted that to, I think it was like 3,000, 3, and that was mainly for the um, Saudi residents. And as you can see, the social distancing and the lines, so, you know, the comparison. Um, so I was actually fortunate to go to Hajj in 2019. And I wanted to show you this video. Let's see if it works. Let's see. I'm do this. Let's see. One second. Okay. So can you see this video? Yes, we can. Okay. Okay. So, so this was this was um, me taking a video on the rooftop with all the people surfing the cover, um, and it sort of gives you like a perspective of you know, the enormity of the people and the event. And just the ambience that you know is just overwhelming and inspiring. Okay, so this is a picture of um, a couple of pictures of myself and my siblings that um, I wrote with my siblings, and we're standing here in front of the Kaaba, and then a close up of the door of the Kaaba, which is um, sort of made of gold and inscribed with gold. Um, writing verses from the Quran, the holy book, the Quran. So when you actually perform Hajj, <clears throat> everybody has to like wear a certain dress code. Um, women can wear anything they want as long as they're covered, you know, from head to toe. And men have to wear like a, like two pieces of white cloth. One covers the top half of the body and the other, the bottom half of the body. So people from all over the world, you know, uh, sort of doing Hajj in that dress code, irrespective of their social class, color, financial status, they're all sort of doing the same ritual, doing the same thing. You know, like the way we talk about diversity here and inclusion here in Beaverton. But when I was at Hajj, I don't think I've ever experienced that much diversity in my whole life. <clears throat> so the whole point of Iran really is that it minimizes the difference between class and social standing, which is, you know, which is quite, quite inspiring. So just to elaborate on that point, you know, the previous point, I wanted to take, um, a moment to see, to sort of say, see what uh, Malcolm X, when he went for Hajj in 1963, he, he wrote a letter back to his mentor in the USA. And I just want to read a little sort of from it. He said, there were tens of thousands of pilgrims from all over the world. They were of all colors from blue eyed blondes to black skinned Africans. But we were all participating in the same ritual, displaying the spirit of unity and brotherhood that my experience in America had led me to believe never could exist between the white and the non-white. And then he goes on to say, this is the first time in his life he had felt no racial antagonism toward whites, nor he ha had he sensed any antagonism on their part against him. And then he goes, there are Muslims of all colors and ranks here in Mecca from all parts of the earth. So I just wanted to, you know, sort of pay homage to what he said, because I think it was really important and profound. <coughs> so. Um, 
So like I said, you know, Mahaj is a series of rituals. I'm not going to go through all of them, but one was, you know, when you circle the Kaaba. Um, another important one is you gather at um, a mountain called Mount Arafat, which is the mountain of mercy. And it's, um, it's about 230 feet in height, but that's just one mountain and it expands. It's actually the plains. The plains of Arafat is where, the people, people, where most of the people gather but some people do climb the mountain, as you can see <clears throat> from that picture. Um, so at this mountain, um, pilgrims, they ask for forgiveness. Um, and the reason this mountain is important is because um, the Prophet Muhammad, he delivered his last sermon at this mountain uh, when he went to perform uh, Hajj with his, his, his mates. Um, so, after the, um, so after the ritual of Hajj is complete, it's like a five, six day process. Um, after it's complete, the pilgrims head back to their campsites. So while the pilgrims are like heading back to their campsites and refreshing up, freshening up, everyone else around the world is celebrating Eid. And this is what Eid is after the completion of Hajj. So, you know, um, you're dressing up, you're buying bangles from the markets, you're distributing sweets, traditional sweets to your neighbors and friends, and you're putting your henna in your hands. You know, it's, it's quite fun whole fun experience and kids are like um they you know they're getting gifts from their parents and, and traditionally they're given money kids are given money um, as as um the gifts so um that's sort of hard in a nutshell but you know there is a little little bit more to it but i'd be here all evening if i sort of expanded on that so anyway so after the whole makkah experience you go and visit the city of medina and this is my sister and I, um, we're sort of going to Maca, Medina on the train, but most people go by coach, uh, train, and some people fly there. And then um, Medina is sort of also Western Saudi Arabia. It's about hundred miles inland from the Red Sea and 270 miles from Makkah by road. It's typically the, the pilgrims travel you know, there and the reason they go there is they go and visit the mosque, which is um, shown here. It's uh, the second holiest city in Saudi Arabia, so Makkah being the first and then Medina is the second. And this was constructed by Prophet Muhammad himself. And this just shows an overview of the mosque. And then you can see the little green dome in the middle. And that's where the Prophet was buried underneath that dome. Um, and it's called a city of light. So, and there's a few pictures of um, that I took inside the mosque, and they have these like expansive shades which which go up in the midday to prevent the heat hitting the pilgrims. And then you've got the inside of the mosque, which is mm, covered with sort of typical striped arches and gold pillar, white pillars with gold trimmings on them. And then the dome, like I said, where underneath the um, Prophet Muhammad um, is buried. And that's sort of, um, you know, in a nutshell, very, very, very sort of brief description of Hajj with some personal experiences. And if you want to learn more, you know, I've got this book, which is Let's Go for Umrah. Umrah is actually a mini, mini pilgrimage. It, you can do Umrah any time of the year, but Hajj, you can only do that during that once, once a year. It's, so this is a book I wrote. If you want to learn more, you can ask me about it and I can, you know, sort of share it with you. And that's it. Thank you. If you have any questions. Okay, stop. Right. You see me now. Okay, thank you. Well done, thank sister. You. Like it. I'm being there like in 2006. Mm. So I'm, I'm Hajji too. And, uh, oh, nice. Yeah, like, uh, I just want to add like all those activities, it should be like specific time. And there is like, I think we have 10 days to do everything or three days sometime to do everything. And uh, uh, well, again, well done. Like uh, that's make me miss that days. And maybe one day we can go together. Yes, hopefully. Yes, it'd be nice. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a, it was a really beautiful experience. It was, um, really like renewing your faith and cleansing it, it really felt you really felt like refreshed when you came back you know you felt like a new person like you were a newborn baby or something so 
yeah. it was nice. Virtual experiment, like the first yeah. time when I saw Al Kaaba, um, I couldn't speak anything maybe for 10 minutes. Like I, I just noticed my face was like this because yeah. it's very holy place and um, you feel peace, like real peace there. Even it's, uh, there's many people, they talking, pray, crying, uh, asking forgiveness, but you will, you will feel like save never happened in entire life. Yeah, definitely is an experience. Thank you so much, Rayhana, for sharing. That was a really wonderful presentation and, and really lovely to see your uh, personal pictures and experience there as well. That was cool. Yeah. Thank you. All right, folks. Um, time to move on to our liaison reports. Um, Councillor Sansusi was unable to be here tonight. He's out of town. Um, so we will go straight uh, to our Beaverton Police Department uh, liaison report. Um, Lieutenant Kingsbury, thanks for being here tonight and um, our condolences uh, to your uh, department's loss recently, um, Sergeant uh, Gaunt. Um, he's, he's in our thoughts. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you for that. Um, uh, you're gonna have to forgive me. Uh, I'm, I can't really expand on uh, on that topic much. It's still very um, fresh. I'll just say that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so I have a couple things to share uh, tonight. Um, uh, a few weeks ago, the uh, department, in, in kind of cooperation with a, um, a victim of uh, domestic violence, uh, we were able to get together and um, uh, install a art series in the lobby of the Public Safety Center called Survivorscape. And it's an art series that basically depicts um, the uh, experience of a uh, victim from uh, the, um, I guess the, the, the event, the trigger, the criminal uh, event, uh, throughout the uh, process of, of the criminal justice experience and, and um, really coming out on the other side. Um, so I'd invite, uh, I'd like to invite you guys all to, to um, uh, come take a look at that. It's in our public space in our lobby. Uh, there's actually a statement below the, the artwork from um, different, um, from the victim, from the victim's family, uh, the chief, some officers, uh, our victims, um, uh, assistance uh, person, Katrina uh, Rodriguez, and it's all very, uh, very impactful. Uh, and I'd uh, like to invite you guys to come take a look at that. If you, if you have time, feel free to stop by our lobby uh, and take a look. Um, the second thing I wanted to share with you, uh, we're actually excited that uh, we we're able to secure some funding to send, I believe it's around 60 of our staff through, um, uh, I don't really want to call it a training because uh, it's not really training, uh, but it's called the Evolve Experience through Red Door uh, Project. Uh, I'm actually going to uh, send an email to Alexis um, with a link to a video that kind of explains uh, what it is and, and some PDFs that you can read uh, if you'd like. Uh, but it's really a facilitated discussion between um, 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 both police or there, there it's a facilitated discussion after um, experiencing monologues between, or, or excuse me, I'm butchering this, experiencing monologues uh, from the perspective of poli both police officers and uh, African-American community members about race and policing. Um, and it's, um, I haven't um, uh, done it yet. I'm actually scheduled, um, well, scheduled. I registered myself to attend it on the 15th. Uh, so I'm really excited um, after you, I think if you view, take the time to view the video uh, that uh, hopefully uh, we can get sent out to you, I think you'll understand kind of the, um, the gravity of this um, experience. Um, and then uh, I think that's actually all I had, those two things. Any questions for me at all? Uh, uh, Raman. Yeah, uh, 
sorry, I am out of town. I am in New York. And I was not aware of uh, fertility or whatever has happened. Could you apprise me, please? Uh, yes, we had a, a long time member of the agency pass away of COVID-19 complications. Oh, okay. So it wasn't on duty thing? No. Okay. My condolences to the department and please pass my condolences to the family. I will. Okay, um, I don't see any other uh, hands unless I'm missing something. So um, yes, I'm at. I was raising my hand, but I, I think the picture will not allow you to see it. So um, I have a question. Is there any update about the case that we have for uh, the Arabic person or the person who almost like, I don't know how he survived, but uh, the, he got like seven shots. He's a student. So is there any update about that case specific? Um, you know, I apologize. I'm not familiar with that case. Um, it, it was a, a, a Beaverton case yes. specifically. And then can you give me some, uh, some more details so I can look into it and maybe report back to you? So Yankman, Arabic Yankman, uh, he's from Morocco. And uh, yeah. uh, I don't know if he involved with some, I don't want like to say gay, gain, because as I know, police department in Beaverton, they hate that word. And they says, we don't have gain in Beaverton yet. So they don't want like to use a gain word and uh, and as a gain as we know in the United States. But anyway, so um, he got like uh, I think his car got like seven shots next to two seventeen. I think it's uh, more than a month ago, and um, he's a young man. And um, last time I heard, like they still investigate and. Uh, as a community as a, as a, not community as a, as a community leader who speak Arabic and uh, represent like Arabic community. Um, if they, I thought like you will have any uh, new update about the case, if we have any a new development or not. So um, maybe next time. I, I think I actually do uh, remember that case. And if the, I'm not sure if the investigation is concluded yet. Um, so uh, generally our stance is when an investigation is ongoing, we don't make public comment uh, about specific details. Uh, but I will, um, I will look into that though. And if, if it has been resolved, I'll be prepared to uh, share what information I can at the, at the next meeting, if that uh, works for you. Perfect, good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Lieutenant Thanks. Kingsbury. Thanks. And I actually just uh, looked at the link to the Red Door Project um, website and it looks really neat. So it looks like you're in for a really cool experience. Yep, I'm, I'm definitely excited for it. Awesome. All right, uh, we'll move along to our uh, H tag liaison report. Teresa, please. Thank you, Rachel. Really quick update that the Housing Technical Advisory Group, H tag, uh, had our last meeting. And in that meeting, we received an update on the housing development project going on in South Cooper Mountain near the high school. Uh, well underway, they are taking a two-prong approach to get started early, trying to reach out to as many community members as they can who qualify for low-income housing, really educating people on the qualifications and not wanting people to feel in any way uh, deterred from applying. Um, that's half the battle is just getting people to apply who do qualify in addition to continuing to keep the community abreast on developments and amenities for that property. Um, I also want to just very briefly um, speak to a question that popped up that audience at home um, watching the Zoom later may not be aware of that a question popped up regarding um, Beaverton um, and homeless shelters. So according to 
KOIN um, and KOIN.com that Beaverton did secure funds for first permanent houseless or housing insecure people shelter. So just throwing that out there. Um, more details to come, feel free to Google that or available for questions, comments, concerns in the chat. And stay tuned for more Beaverton updates on the Beaverton website for the Housing Technical Advisory Group. Back to you, Rachel. Thanks, Teresa. All right, folks, that concludes our liaison reports for tonight. And uh, now we are moving on to um, discuss our uh, DEI plan annual review. So we have an hour together on this. Um, we have three additional sections from uh, the first three that we were sent. We have 60 minutes and we need to assign progress ratings to each of these six areas in those 60 minutes. So uh, I would, since we were, we were able to have a little bit of discussion about uh, the first three at our last meeting, I would like to prioritize discussion on um, the new three that that we have seen uh, from this last week and I would like to begin our uh, discussion first by um, highlighting what those progress ratings are. Um, Alexis will put them in the chat just to remember um, the whole purpose of our, our discussion is to um, essentially evaluate um, each of these these prior priority areas and assign them a quantitative value, which is um, emerging, developing, moderate, significant, or successful. Um, we will have a few minutes of discussion on each section. Then um, Alexis will initiate a poll uh, via Zoom. We will vote, and hopefully we'll have consensus. Um, if not, there is the potential to have a little bit more discussion. Um, but uh, we do need to uh, come out of this meeting tonight with uh, progress ratings assigned for each, se each section. So I will stop talking and we will begin discussion on city practices, please. Um, please remember that there are, what, 12, 13 board members here. So if you can keep your statements brief-ish um, so that everybody gets a chance to, to speak, um, that would be great. And Alexis, do you have something you want to add? Just wondered if you wanted me to flash up the the uh, the poll um, from beforehand. Ten people have responded there, so there's a starting point there. Or if you want to take a look at that at the end, no, that's no. If we have that, um, can we see what that is? Do you have it just for city practices to start out with, or are you going to show it for everything? Um, I was just gonna. My screen is just kind of opened up to showing this one. Um, but I can Perfect. Show, do it anyway. That's great. So it looks like uh, about 60% of folks um, assigned a moderate progress rating. Um, and then significant was the next uh, highest rating. Um, does anybody want to uh, speak to any of that or just share your own thoughts on city practices? What you gleaned from that section? I'll try this another way. Um, <laughs> it seemed like moderate was the most um, uh, the most common uh, progress rating assigned to this based on the poll that uh, Alexis just shared with me. If if you did um, say moderate, uh, is there anyone who would give a brief statement as to why what uh, what made this uh, a moderate rating to you? 
Monijay. I say moderate because the uh, activity, city activity, they are so vast and it's kind of hard to say. Uh, and the, the kind of, uh, I know they are working hard in kind of uh, all the practices they have. Um, so because then there are um, still there, there are more to work on. Uh, that's why uh, I cannot say, um, I know they are on their way, positive way, but still they are moderate to me. Thanks, Monije. No problem. Anyone else? And if you didn't vote moderate, you voted a different one, I would also like to hear why you chose a different rating. Monica. Hi, hi, sorry, I'm a little bit sick. Um, I think it, it, it is still developing. That's why I think it, you can see something happening, but it is kind of slow for me. I don't see like mother, uh, mothering uh, progress. I see a little more like a slow development. That's the reason why I couldn't go through that on the mother way. We still need to work a little more, a little harder, I guess. We still need to see that is more progress in that area. And um, that's why. Thank you. Thanks, Monica. Uh, Rehan, I thought I saw your hand up before. Do you still want to say something? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sort of switching between screens because I wish we had a hard copy of this document because now I'm switching back and forth, that's fine. Um, I was going to say that the CP 1.5, I felt that I, I thought most of the parameters were moderate progress, but for me, the CP 2.1 was developing. But then if I put everything in the grand scheme of things, it overall you worked, worked out to be moderate progress. So that's why I gave it moderate progress. Thanks, Rihanna. And I actually really agree with your statements, Rihanna. I felt that by and large, um, there's a lot of moderate progress in most of these indicators. Um, the one section that was lacking for me as well was diversity in contract, contracting, which was C point, uh, CP2. Um, in particular, was sort of disappointed in, in uh, the uh, city's usage of COVID certified firms, which to some effect, uh, you can see the impact of COVID on uh, some of these numbers during this time, but um, still. But overall, I agree. Um, I thought the rest of the section showed uh, fairly promising progress. Anybody else for this section? Rachel, I'll just chime in and say that I agree um, for the points already mentioned. Um, No comment too small, just throwing that out there. So. Awesome, thanks Teresa. I think that's the most succinct I've ever heard you. <laughs> uh, do you folks feel ready to vote on this one? Uh, it doesn't seem like there's a ton of uh, discussion about this. Okay, um, Alexis, can we see a poll? Yes, I'm ready to send it to you. Uh, can you see it and participate? I guess I will see in just a second. Yes. Oh, I don't see the poll. Where is it? 
Is it in the chat? Should have just popped up on your Zoom screen. Oh, I can get it. Uh, I received it and I submitted. Okay. Uh, it hasn't come in yet. You haven't gotten it, Roman? No. It might not be as visible if you're uh, on your phone. Yeah, the phone. If the, the phone I'm is on, which uh, pages? I'm on, my, I'm on my iPad. Switch. What does that mean? Yeah. Um, if you can't, um, I imagine there could be a variety of reasons why. Um, I'll just say if you can't, if it's not popping up for you and you'd like to just put your vote in the chat, um, I can add that number to the, or we can take that into consideration. So uh, Alexis, if we already did that and send it, like, uh, do we need to do it again? This is a different poll than the, the before the meeting one. Okay. So yes, you need to either answer to this or put in the chat, please. Yes, one or the other, don't do both. Either answer it in the poll or answer it in the chat. Okay, uh, Alexis, if you, can, if you can put that, uh, uh, what we are voting on on chat, then I can vote. Right now, I don't have any, any so, info. So, Raman, this is for city practices. The progress ratings are emerging, developing, moderate, significant, or successful. If you scroll up a little bit in your chat, you'll see them written in there too, and the description of them. Alexis, how are your results? Do you have enough? We have nine of 14 people, um, but there are a couple of Let's see. Yeah, Ryan and Jenna. Sorry, Ryan and Jenna, please do not vote. <laughs> <laughs> um, I said to all panelists, I realize you both are, are um, categorized as panelists right now. So we have nine of 14, so that would make 11, 12, 13. So there's just one person that hasn't voted, but we have pretty much everybody. We'll give just a few more few more seconds for that last, whoever that last person is to get their vote in. Thank you, Jenna and Ryan. You caught on to that. Yeah, may I say something? Um, uh, I'd like to know the people who don't vote, can they <clears throat> explain like why or do, if, if I'm asking too much for too much, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so it looks like we have everybody except for one person. So, um, okay. I'm so sorry. I'm picking up my kids right now, so I just I just grabbed them from daycare. Um, I I'm the one who didn't vote. Uh, mystery, mystery, mystery vote person revealed. Um, and I went with. I'm sorry. If I could just speak it, that would be easier for me. That's I'll fine. Have the kids home soon. Sorry about that. Um, I went with emerging just based on. Son, one second, please. I know, me too. Um, oh, I'm sorry, one sec. I'll, I'll just bring this laptop outside. Uh, I went emerging just based on the demographics of the data and, and where I would, I think it is a healthy place for the city to be in terms of workforce um, percentage. And uh, and I think it's mirroring the community that they that we serve, that, that, that the city serves. And, and I think it's got a ways to go. So that's why I went with emerging. Thank you, Brandon. You bet, thank you. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and end this poll. So you're gonna see the results, um, but take into consideration that there was two emerging votes uh, and one additional moderate vote. So moderate um, is where the board landed by majority. Okay on this one and usually procedurally, usually what you all do is you go through this whole process and then at the end we bring up like the slate of like, this is what all six section ratings were and then you take the official vote on those. Perfect. Okay, 
we will go with uh, moderate on this one um, by majority vote for now um, and move on to uh, public safety next. Alexa, sorry, I know this is a lot of uh, <laughs> switching screens for you too, probably, so. Okay, looks like moderate was the most common uh, preliminary progress rating for this one, followed by equal distribution between developing and emerging. Thanks, Alexis. Um, anybody want to speak to this one? I wouldn't mind speaking first. This is Teresa. Hello. Um, so I had a really hard time identifying where to place this exactly. I thought that somewhere in between developing and moderate would be appropriate. Uh, just as a reminder that the developing category states that work is evident on the area's goals, but tangible results are still lacking. Moderate progress being progress is beginning to show in several of the area's categories. And so some of the areas that I saw that progress was starting to show in the numbers, um, just referencing really quickly here, the PS 101, and in that it states that the percentage of staff who identifies people of color and of different genders uh, within the police department staff and union represents positions police staff and management um, that they're increasing and so we saw 12.8 percent um, people of color and it was up from 10 percent in 2000 in 2020 sorry i was gonna say 2020 but not to confuse anyone anyways and uh nine percent in 2019 and so that you know we're once again looking at the fiscal year and it's significant to me. Well, looking a little bit further down at the applicants um, coming up once again, speaking volumes to Beaverton Police Department doing work with the Human uh, Resources and Human Rights Advisory Committee to get a lot of feedback. As we know, 2020 was a very difficult year for the Beaverton Police Department. And um, with events that went on within the United States, um, you know, facing a lot of criticism, um, being able to rise to the challenge and really being able to uh, show that they stand out in even in the midst of COVID, um, as we saw a rise in people being isolated at home, but also a small increase in um, crimes happening because the jails weren't taking in people. Um, overall, I think if so, if the majority says moderate, I would lean that way. And if the majority of people said developing, there certainly the, the data to support that. But like I said in the beginning, I had a hard time with that one. And I just want to throw it out there that I did. If anyone else feels the same way, we're in the same boat, so kudos to us. But um, overall, I do think that data shows they are improving, whether based off of hard work, you know, criticism, whatever. Sometimes shaming makes people do better, whatever, peer pressure to be the best. Um, and with that and the looks, I'm just gonna stop talking and give someone else the floor. Monica, please go. Thank you, Teresa. I feel like you. I had the opportunity to interview people at the San Francisco, uh, the Latinos. And what I hear from them, it was very positive because a few years ago, maybe two years ago, it was not the same feeling. This time when we were talking to them, I see the progress in the police. The police was there with us when we, one of the officers was there with us when we were interviewing. So that's showing the interest that they have to hear and to know about the, the opinions of the people. And that for me is significant. And 
I can add um, grade that one as significant because we still need to work. But for me personally, I felt like it was very, very significant what happened that day and the, and the way people is feeling now towards the police and what they believe in and that they will work together with them, not against them as they always feel. So I could say significant, but I'm gonna be uh, careful and I'm just gonna go with mother because um, I think we need to still work a little more, but it was very satisfying, very satisfying what I heard and, and, and the way the people was feeling totally different the last two years ago when I used to talk to people about that. It was really refreshing for me. So that's what I wanted to share with you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Monica. Yeah. <laughs> Can I say something also? Uh, I all the the rating I rate very high except this one from my own experience. But my this one the rating is still quite a high. I think I tend to 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 have my uh, the all the rating higher than the, the the rest of the team here. But this one is the lowest one from my own experience because I have been in my neighborhood for now eight years, and recently the. Uh, uh, much more uh, crimes happened in this very quiet, uh, very uh, used to be very safe neighborhood. So that's the uh, just from my own uh, experience. Of course, I don't have that much chance like Monica did to to reach out to different people. So I don't know the overall the situation. But from my own eight years uh, living in this neighborhood, that's a very uh, you see the significant raise uh, the 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 the. the the crimes rate. Yeah, that's why I read uh, the lowest one in my all rating. Okay, uh, we have Moni Jay and then Anusha. Uh, thank you. I also go with the uh, dress up. I, I had a hard time to decide because uh, kind of the uh, different areas, I see like uh, rate in um, the development in some of them, but the decline in some of them. And uh, I paid attention to the managing management part and they were almost, most of them were zero, zero, zero in diversity. And also I have always this question and I don't know if I was ever answer, got an answer to that. But uh, so we, the, they are trying to um, diverse uh, the hiring and all that, but when they hire, uh, do, how long that new person uh, keep the job? Do they show also that people who kind of stay at the job um, or, and also has, that, that kind of have been always on my mind this question. And also, do they prepare people uh, to kind of um, give, give them the heart or give them the space to um, apply for that job? And, uh, but some parts I really am impressed by the progress um, uh, and um, I, by um, having the uh, reports of the different representatives in our meetings uh, and being involved with the breakfast with the police and um, that I used to at attend. Uh, I, and then the academy and the community academy the, that uh, I and also, attended um, participated from, I see that how they are really hard, working hard in some areas and they are successful so I kind of as uh, Teresa said if we have more in moderate I will go with moderate and if we have in more kind of uh, higher than that I will go higher than that but I won't go lower than um, kind of uh, moderate thank you Thanks, Monique. Anusha? Yeah, so um, I think I marked moderate on this one, and I can definitely see that there has been significant um, progress being made. Um, I did notice that several of these indicators were hindered by um, COVID-19, so um, those didn't have any anything to report there. One thing that did stand out, um, it's 1.2, and um, 
So of, of applicants for 16 total jobs posted in the police department during um, 2021, 40% were people of color, and that's down from 43.5% the year before. Um, so I thought that was a pretty, um, that was just an indicator that stood out to me. And I felt like, um, you know, that was just something that did weigh into what I selected. Um, and I think there was a couple of other ones that I saw where I would have liked to see some better results there. So um, ultimately kind of landed in that, that moderate area for me as well. Rihanna. Yeah, so hold on, I have to switch to the other screen. So. PS 3.2, okay, one second, let me switch. PS 3.3, PS 2.3, no, PS 3.2, got the other way around. Right, so it says um, uh, they had to rename the Citizens Academy to Community Academy. And then in that actual point, it says the percentage of participants in Citizens Academy, should that be Community Academy? Then if they change the name? Um, it, Rihanna, just to answer that question, it it would be nice if it was, but what we uh, we don't mess with the left hand column because that's what uh -huh. that's from the original plan that the language that you all wrote, so that's what it was at the time. So I felt really hesitant okay. to change any language there until you all update the plan. But maybe sure. we should put a footnote or something because that is a little bit. Yeah, just so it was just so the mismatch, mismatch between the columns. That's what I noted. But yeah, that was it. Switch back. All right, any others for this section? Um, I, I agree with a lot of what's being said. I do have a question, um, Alexis, I don't know if you know the answer to this. If not, maybe we could pass this along to um, Lieutenant Kingsbury since he's not here with us anymore. But um, indicator PS 5.2, about the sanctuary city, uh, the new bit in red um, that says that um, there were new statutes enacted by the Oregon legislature um, that addresses cooperation with federal immigration authorities and that that uh, information is being used to update BPD policy. Um, that was sort of vague. Um, I was wondering what the actual implications of those statutes are on BPD policy. Um, and if we could get an answer to that, that would be awesome. I think that's a great question. And I, I don't know. I'm the sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't understand the question. Could you repeat that, please? Uh, sure. So I'm specifically uh, looking at indicator PS 5.2, which is that the city regularly reaffirms and furthers its commitment to being a sanctuary city. Um, but the new information that's listed here for 2021 that's in red, it says that the 2021 Oregon legislature enacted statutes addressing cooperation with federal immigration authorities, uh, which are currently being used to update BPD policy. Um, as incredibly vague and sort of alarming the way that that is written um, and what impact that has. I would like to know what impact that has on um, Be Written being a sanctuary city and, and how those statutes are affecting BPD policy. Does that make sense? More sense? Okay. It makes sense to me, Rachel, and we can definitely ask him to expand on that. I, I um, my assumption in that was that it was um, because Oregon is also a sanctuary state that it, that it is in fact more progressive policy around that, that BPD is adopting, but you're right, it doesn't explain what that means. So I think that's a great question. I can pass that on to him to bring for next time. Great, thank you. That, I mean, that doesn't uh, really have a huge impact on, on my rating overall for that section, which um, I thought was generally moderate, although like, a lot of folks I was waffling between moderate and developing uh, for a lot of the indicators, but um, yeah. Okay, um, do folks feel ready to vote on this one? All right, Alexis, poll time, please.
So it is up now. If you're one of those folks that is having trouble accessing the poll, um, go ahead and put in the chat or say out loud um, your rating for public safety. Emerging, developing, moderate, significant, or successful, please. Alexis, moderate, moderate. Great, thank you. Thanks. Okay, I think we have everyone then. I'll go ahead and show you all this. Um, and note that there is one extra vote for developing, so that brings it up to five out of 10, and one additional one for moderate progress, which brings it up to six to 10. Um, so technically moderate wins it, but only by one vote. Okay. Um, we're going to move forward then. Um, and for now we will go with moderate for public safety. Our next one is, uh, Community building and inclusion. Wow. That is <laughs> very unhelpful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, I agree, Rachel. I, I think it developing clearly it has the most percentage, although there are some different opinions on the other categories, it should be a great discussion. Yeah, okay. Um, well then let's open it up for discussion in case folks couldn't see that. It was 30% um, moderate and I think 20% for uh, developing, wait, no, sorry. It was developing was 30% and 20% for emerging moderate and significant doesn't matter let's just talk <laughs> <laughs> okay can i go sure monica then ahmed i i think i really feel strong about this on my position what i have because reading and receiving emails about the new housing projects and too like that i really feel like it's progressing i really feel like that we have more than before like before we didn't hear that much about what was happening. We didn't know all, it was not development, developing anything before. This time, I really feel very confident about it. So I feel like it's moderate. It's, it's, it's really good. I That's my perception on this one. So it is very uh, difficult seeing the graphic on this one. But I think we, I have the tendency more to go to mother because it is, it is progressing, it is moving, it is happening. That's the way I see it. It is happening. So that's that's my opinion about this one. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Monica. Amen. Uh, honestly, I agree with Monica. Uh, um, even with the COVID and it's not easy to coordinate all those things and maybe community event and we success with like be written night market, we back on, on business, let's say it in this way. And uh, like, even we got maybe more money because the COVID from the government, but uh, honestly, as Ahmed, um, I'm maybe, <clears throat> I'm, I'm looking for more because I know we can do more. And um, I think we need to be more cooperated, even us as a group for helping the city staff to be more uh, communicated with the community and how we can help with that if we can help. 
So, but anyway, like I feel um, um, maybe just me, I don't know, like I, many people, even in my community now, they know more about what's going on uh, and um, they may be involved more because they are um, missing old days, like all those days before we, two years. And even they miss the, the tree lighting uh, event when we have like for Christmas. So because any event we can use it for to improve those building skills. So um, again, like I wish we have more and I know we can do more. And um, I'm maybe the first one will volunteer to if they, there is anything I can help with. I'm super happy to help. Thank you. Thanks, Ahmed. Anyone else? Teresa, sorry, didn't see your hand. I know it blends in with the background. Um, so I would like to second what Ahmed said, that I agree that there is more that we wish would happen and that can be done. And we certainly know and understand that um, Beaverton as a city and as a very active city with active community members, we're capable of doing more. And this certainly has been a difficult time in the fiscal year um, 2020 and going into 2021. I do want to say that my opinion is developing and just to say why, um, you know, really breaking it down in this entire section, there are five parts of the section and I looked at it kind of piece by piece. So just CB1 is all about the multicultural center, doesn't exist, not even started as a conversation. We did have the pastor of the church and Kevin Teeter, uh, head of the Downtown Beaverton Association, come and speak to us last month about getting that started, which is phenomenal. But even in the presentation, there's still a long way to go to get funding and all of that. And so that certainly is not going to happen within this fiscal year. Um, we don't know, but we still continue to support it and to be the voice of reason. And, you know, all the trial and error that we have seen as a diversity advisory board in the many years to say, hey, this and this and this has been tried. Um, this is what you can try to do differently. Um, so moving on to CB2, I thought that that was emerging as well with all of the things that had been going on in the city. I still think that there is more that can be done. Things that I thought were fantastic, obviously the Beaverton night market happened, the welcoming week and things were able to be done both virtually and in person. A lot of the things that individuals as community members, if you remember Shara had events that she wanted to do and some things had to be pushed back of course. And so it's not as though community members weren't pushing for things to happen due to the circumstances, things had to be postponed or not happen at all. And so that does feed into the numbers, but that's kind of out of everyone's control. So just as an example, in the CB2 section, also the Patricia Reeser Center for the Arts were some heavy hitter points that once again, uh, haven't really happened yet. So when that happens, when the Patricia Reeser Center for the Arts does open, that will give that cultural celebration aspect a huge bump, I think. Um, moving on to CB3, in my overall opinion, with the acknowledgement of diversity in public spaces, definitely a high score, um, moderate. Uh, CB4, with the immigrant and refugee newcomer integration, I think that with all of the wonderful things that the city of Beaverton is doing, listed here, there is still more that can be done. And I would like to second what Ahmed has already said, is that we as individual community leaders in our own right, as part of the, as part of the diversity advisory board, but also you know, within each of our neighborhoods, you know, there are 11 neighborhoods in the city of Beaverton to come together collectively to truly, as a welcoming city, to in lack of a better term, embrace and give a warm welcome to people who are immigrants and refugees. And we are one of the most diverse cities within Washington County, you know, one of the most diverse areas within the state of Oregon. And yet 
you know, <laughs> we still have a hard time reaching community. It's not because of a lack of desire um, or, you know, language access as we continue to have. It's just this sense of collectiveness, I guess. And so the city um, is one part of being a part of that glue to bring people together and building that connectedness. Uh, lastly, I know I'm ranting, but it's really important and no one else had anything to say. So welcoming city aspect of this as a part of um, my rating and explaining my opinion that I gave it moderate as well. So just a recap um, in this CB section, emerging, emerging, moderate, developing, moderate. So that's why I gave it an overall like average of developing, but like a high developing, you know, kind of like, you know, are you middle class, like at the high or the bottom? So definitely this developing category at the height. And I think that it will be over the top next fiscal year, this time for the same discussion, but just to explain what I think and why I think what I think. And if you don't agree, that's okay, respectfully, just to, you know, share so that people can broaden their own opinions because it was 30% 2020 20 and 10, as far as the pie graph showed. So if any of those things seemed right to you, just so that we can vote and have a more succinct vote. And with that, I yield my time to the chair. Go ahead, Rachel. Uh, and I want to add, like, for uh, Teresa, like, I know from uh, some refugee uh, programs, like, we have three resettlement agency in, in Oregon that um, there isn't, like, what I got from them, there is, like, high percentage, at least 150 Afghani family uh, from SIV uh, community that who work with U.S. Army or U.S. government in Afghanistan they want to live in Biritan because the com Afghan community growing up in, uh, in, uh, in Biritan. So at least we need to prepare for that or put it in our mind that community will grow up fast. All right, any last thoughts on this section before we vote, Monica? <laughs> um, I do agree in somehow with Teresa but in my, the way I see it, it is good. It is mother because I think we are working on it. I think it's, even though with all the difficult times, COVID, returning from COVID very slowly, but I think it's a very progress. It's a lot of progress. It's a lot of work that it is, not everything is so tangible, but we know it's happening and will happen and will continue to happen. So that's why my position is mothering because it is happening. It is a big deal. I think it's something very big that that's why deserves this rank on this book. Thank you. All right. Um, I don't think I feel like I need to say much on this. Uh, I actually felt like Teresa must have read my notes or something because a lot of what I felt she said out loud. Um, so that was nice. The only thing I really want to point out um, in this one is CB3 acknowledgement of diversity in public spaces. I guess I just wanted to express a little personal frustration with this one because place naming was a focus of ours for like two years and I still feel like we're not really seeing very much progress um, from the council on at least the development of policy uh, around this, although I've been really encouraged by the People's History Beaverton project and um, what the cultural inclusion staff has been working on with developing a land acknowledgement statement in collaboration with local tribes. That's awesome work, but um, I guess this is something I can just share at the city council presentation next month. So I'll just stop there. <laughs> um, but I also just want to say, I agree with uh, Teresa overall, mine averaged out to developing. Um, do you folks feel ready to vote on this one? Okay, let's get a poll out please, Alexis.
And uh, sorry, Shara, I did see that you recently joined in the middle of that conversation. So I want to make sure you know what's happening. Um, we are talking about the community building and inclusion section of the DEI report. Um, so right now you should have seen a poll that went out asking you to um, vote on the progress rating that you assigned for this section. If you have any issues accessing that poll, please put your uh, progress rating in the chat. Thanks, Rachel. I got it and I already submitted. Thank you. Thanks, Shara, and welcome to the meeting. Thank you. All right, thank you everyone for voting. Um, this is the result of the poll and we have one additional vote for developing. So that would be eight people for developing and one additional vote for moderate. So that would be four for moderate. So developing um, is the rating you all chose. Okay, thanks Alexis. That looked a lot more conclusive than the preliminary. <laughs> Pie chart. That was a successful um, discussion. Thank you. Yeah, that was a great discussion. Thanks, everyone. Very helpful. Um, okay, so we've now gone through the new new three sections. We're going to circle back around um, more quickly to um, the three that we sort of touched on last meeting. Um, I feel like we had a pretty robust discussion about um public engagement last time so i'd like to put that one last in the hopes that there won't be very much discussion i would like to do economic empowerment next please okay for those who can't see this pie chart very well we have 40 percent um preliminary voting for developing uh, 30% for significant, 20% uh, for moderate, and 10% for successful. Would anybody like to uh, start by explaining what and why you rated this section as you did? Teresa is very excited about this section. I have a question before I state my opinion. So just as a point of clarification, we discussed this last month, but we're going to have further discussion in order to vote on it. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Okay. So if you spoke last month, feel free to highlight what you said, but you don't have to repeat everything you said. If you didn't speak last month on this, please add in your thoughts. Okay. So not to ramble on too much because I spoke about it last month. It was a pretty quiet discussion on economic empowerment, but just as a refresher, I selected developing and it gave one pro and one con. Um, not sure if I should share those because I shared it last month, but I will just leave room and space for other people to have a conversation or share their thoughts about it. And if anyone wants to know mine, I'll chime in. Otherwise, I yield my time back to the chair. Okay, I heard developing. Rehana, what do you have? Okay, so what are we doing again? Economic empowerment, right? Yes. So I gave um, EE1 um, education to support craze I gave emerging because uh, there wasn't much um, going on. EE2 entrepreneurship I gave significant progress, EE 2.1 and 2.2. And then, um, so, you know, tying that all together, I sort of, my overall rating was developing um, because I felt there was some, okay, let me have to get back onto the other screen again. I felt that EE2, we did some 
a lot of work there and um, some results were tangible. So overall, I gave it a developing. All right, thank you. I have two developings. Anyone else? Do people just feel really ready to vote on this one? Um, can I just can I just ask? There was um, this one was well. This one and the last one had the biggest splits. Um, so just curious if just wanted to to put out there again. Um, if anybody who rated it differently than that wanted to share some specific feedback. This one is just notable to me because you have almost the full range again of votes, and all we've heard from so far is developing. Can I ask something, please? I was not there the last month, so I didn't have the time to um, see what's uh, the progress or no progress. My question is this. When it comes to this economic uh, development, it's the business they open. I read so much publicity in, in the Facebook, for instance, how many restaurants or how many places they open in Jainao and uh, Beaverton. So I, I think for me to vote, it's kind of like I'm not completely informed to give my opinion. And I don't know what to do with that. If I don't vote, it will be okay because I'm not sure about it. Uh, I don't have the information that I would like to have to see the progress or no progress in that area. So what can I do? In order for me to vote, I want to vote something that I feel. And I don't know much to do either way. Can, is that okay if I don't vote? I'll give my answer and then um, somebody else, Rachel, if you want to chime into what your preference is. I would just say um, on all of these, um, on, on all of these areas, what you're rating is is the information that's presented in the report compared to the indicators that you all designed. So certainly your lived experience in the community that I'm hearing people reflect on is, is relevant and there may be stuff that didn't make it into the report, but really the baseline assumption is that you are rating based on what was presented to you in the report compared to what you all laid out as goals. That, that would be how I would answer that question. So I would say, so, Monica, even if you feel like you don't have all the information you need, you you actually you actually do in some ways in, if, if you've seen the section, yeah. because that's what the city presented back to you. And that's, that, that's what I was thinking. I feel like it's developing a, a, according with what I read and what I got the information. So it would be developing for me, like that would be my vote. If, if that's how you feel, then yeah, that would be your okay. vote. Okay, thank you. I also felt like this section was developing for me, so that's not really helping with uh, explaining the diversity of progress writings that we saw in the preliminary votes. Brandon. Hi, I'm out here in outer space now. Um, for me, it was developing and, uh, you know, a lot of similarity uh, with, with everyone else. Where I'm kind of curious is in, in the language around um, on the city reporting relative to like internships and uh, work study and research groups. I'm kind of curious to have that data, um, like, well, de-aggregated, I guess just to see like which, which, which communities are um, being affected by those positive um, interactions or opportunities. Uh, and I don't know if this is the time to bring it up, but it just kind of stood out to me. Um, so yes, thank you. So Brandon, just to clarify, you, you would like it if you could see demographic information about who is participating in those? Yeah, internships, uh, job shadowing, um, the student research. I'll make a note about that for next year. Cool, thank you. All right, um, can we take a vote now? 
Cool. In this uh, quiet space as people vote, I just wanted to say indicator E 2.1 um, impact Beaverton. That was awesome to read. Um, They're doing some great work. Um, and I know it said it merged with the Beaverton Business Recovery Center, but they said they more than doubled their caseload. It's just in incredible work um, there. So good job city on that one. And uh, honestly, as a person living in Beaverton, I noticed like there is a lot of like reflection on the business on the street itself. Like we saw like, and I heard from many business owners in Beaverton how much the city was supportive, especially what like when the pandemic and closing and uh, after they start to open and how much they help them to reopen again with full capacity, especially when we had like some business they extend to the street and to uh, like um, maybe curb and all those city provide them materials to help them. I think that's affect a lot of, especially the small businesses with a better way, not the, way, the negative way. So I want to like, I agree with Rachel. Um, they did a great job. This one was unanimous um, from folks voting in the poll and then also in the chat. So unanimously developing. I'm sorry. That's I don't know why that was so funny. advisory board. Yes. Yes. A hundred percent. That is consensus. Wow, yeah. that that's impressive <laughs> uh, impact on. of yes. discussion. We can all go and get Baskin Robbins because we all agree on the same thing. My all right, treat. let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's look at uh, housing and livability next. Sorry, I know we're running out of time for this um, process. So, Ramen, you can't come because you're in New York, obviously, but we'll save you a scoop. Okay, so this one looks like a split 40% uh, between significant, 40% between moderate, uh, followed by 20% developing. Teresa, just to let you know, I'm coming back tomorrow. <laughs> Ice cream will be gone. It will be digested. You get no, a rain no, check, you gotta though. Keep, you rain check. It for me. <laughs> rain check. <laughs> All right. Anybody want to make the case for um, the progress rating you signed for housing and livability? Teresa. Thank you, Rachel. So uh, I gave this area a significant progress rating. Um, I have a front row seat to housing and livability being the liaison to the housing technical advisory group. And in my reporting over the last year, not only has the city of Beaverton implemented a five-year housing action plan to try and foresee the housing needs, not only of right now, but the future, and they continue year over year to provide community members with the progress. Um, the city has taken, I feel like, progressive steps to achieving and um, expecting growth. Uh, they have even gone so far as to expand on the ability for accessory dwelling units or alternative housing options. And we had that speaker guy, Rob, Zoller come and talk to us, if you remember him, dark haired guy, middle age, neutral voice. Sorry, Rob, if you're watching this, but that's how I remember you. Um, sure, you're a wonderful person. Anyways, 
Um, and that even though um, COVID-19 happened in the fiscal year 2020, 2021, that the city was able to pivot as needed to still move forward in development negotiations to ensure that developers, contractors in the beginning phases of a lot of the affordable housing projects were not derailed. So it would be a whole nother thing in conversation if we were in the middle of construction while COVID was happening. And certainly for the Marianne, that was the case. And yet they still opened on time. And, you know, applications are pouring in as we speak to be a part of that. And so it's almost as though COVID happened at the perfect time. That might be a horrible thing to say, but in the sense of housing and livability where contracts were being signed, where people were turning in their submissions for things, it's working out. I mean, they're, it's all gonna you know, pop up for places within the calendar year of 2022 and 2023, but um, I'm really excited to see what this fiscal year 2021, 2022 has to offer, but so far it's promising. So that's why I say significant. I really would like to hear some other opinions uh, of people who did not choose significant. Um, once again, information based off of what we were given. And I gave my ratings a little higher, not only because of the facts that we were given, but my personal on the ground knowledge of what is being done. So. Uh, Teresa, we need to hear that before we vote it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you after, I see Badajay's hand in ramen. Go ahead guys, mm -hmm. Badajay then ramen. Thank you. I um, I see that the I mean, significant development uh, in, the, in the housing as well. But if we do, if we're referring to the number of housing houses are being built, I don't like it. I feel I I feel like I'm suffocated. Like when I was driving through Moray Boulevard, it was so open. Now they are building so many like. And the houses, I don't know who wants to live in these houses. They are so tiny. <laughs> I don't know. They look tiny to me. And they are kind of cutting all the trees. And to me, I don't like it. I know we need houses for uh, houses people. We need affordable houses. And I attend most of the meetings. I am part of the meetings. But... I, it doesn't mean uh, on, on what cost we are building all these houses. Um, so that's, that's the kind of problem I have, if you can convince me. Um, but the fact that they are building so many houses and so many people can probably they will live. And like there are some houses that are building on Shoals Ferry and uh, close to the high school that they just knew in the US high school. And I'm in touch with this realtor because some people, when they want to buy houses or they kind of, as a networking, they ask me. And they said, these are not that kind of cheap or something that some low income people can afford uh, buying them. So if my notion is wrong, please explain to me because um, I, these are the things that I can feel and I'm not, an expert in housing, even though I have been in uh, housing subcommittee forever with DAB, and then I am really involved with housing everywhere, I can say. Mm, so uh, then, uh, um, because I haven't voted on this yet, uh, because of all these um, kind of questions that are in my mind. Thank you. I really want to answer that question, but I also want to make sure Raman and Ahmed has one more thing he wants to say. So Raman, you have your hand up. Go ahead. Yeah, I think, uh, Teresa, uh, you are there right in the middle of everything, and I appreciate your feedback. And uh, I feel uh, there are certain measures that are being taken to address the issue, and uh, well, I'm going to vote significant.
Ahmed. So I just want to second Miniji. Maybe on the paper they they did a great job, but honestly, on the street, we're still missing a lot. We have a housing crisis, and uh, even for the prices, it's uh, no way can we say it's affordable housing. Like no way. Like I, for two years now, I'm trying to buy a house. Nobody with low income family can buy a house in Beaverton, in all of Beaverton. Less house you can buy with three bedroom, more than $400,000. And this is like in cheapest area. And the house you, that means built around 1970. So uh, like having for affordable housing, like Mini G mentioned, like next to the mountainside area, like mountainside high school area, the cheapest one was like $600,000. And uh, we call it in our language or in our community, a matching box. Like the match, you use it for fire. It's, we call it that. Or toy house, because it's so small, like narrow and a three store. And like, if I will be sleepy and I was like in the first floor and I want to go to bedroom in the third floor, I will be wake up because all the stairs I, I got. So anyway, I don't want like to take a long time, but maybe for rent, yes, we, we have some rent assistance from the county, other programs, uh, I think UH, a, I, I think they call it, but as a buying house to own house, there is no affordable housing you can buy, maybe with appetite, but it's not for everybody. Like it's not, uh, it's, even it's not a lottery. They will pick someone they like, or they think it's qualified for those housing. So I, I'm, again, I want to buy a house for two years right now. I couldn't. And by the way, my wife working and I work it for full time. Both we work full time job. We cannot. So I hope we can do that maybe next year. <laughs> Thank you. I saw Rehana's hand. Oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, just to um, drum that point down, the affordable housing thing, um, this summer, the, the bidding war was really crazy. It was driving the prices of the housing up, which uh, makes it even more, you know, unaffordable for Beaverton residents, which um, I think uh, is sort of quite ridiculous. But anyway, so on this topic, uh, housing, and I gave HL1 and HL2 significant progress, and then HL3, HL4, HL emerging, and HL5 developing, and HL6 displacement developing. So I don't know, to average that out, I gave it a developing score. A high developing, almost on the you know verge of being significant. That was my score. Monica. It is a mixed feelings with this one. We know that the progress on housing is working, is developing, is doing it. The biggest problem I think it is, is for instance, from the very beginning, my personal opinion about the mountain, the, the new development, I was kind of opposed because that was not gonna be, we knew from the beginning, that was not gonna be affordable. That area is for, rich people, for people with money, okay? It's no such thing that anyone else can believe there. Okay, so I don't believe in that. I don't. Uh, I know that they're developing everywhere you go, they're developing, but it is affordable. No, it is not completely. I don't know where it is the affordable because I know families that they're trying to buy condominiums, they're expensive. Not only homes, not only houses, condominiums. So 
that's the part that I keep thinking, okay, it's developing, it's growing, it's a lot of constructions, but where is the part of operability? Where is it? That, that was a big promise. It's still, it is affordable, yes, for people who make more than $40,000, $80,000 a year, not for other people. That's affordable for the, that people. I don't know how people who, who doesn't make that much money and where are they gonna buy it? So I'm very divided on this. I don't, I don't even think that it's developing on the way they should. So for me, developing, developing or progressing will be 50-50. 50% 50 for the highest prices and 50% for the lowest price. But it's not that happening. It is not. So that's what how I'm feeling right now with this this part. Thank you. All right. Any other thoughts for folks? Uh, what progress rating you assigned to this section? Let's vote. Um, can I say something? I also have been in contact with Rob personally by phone or emails because I'm discussing this part. And this is the part that I must discuss with him about it exactly. What, where is the affordability? Where? I want people to show me. That, that's something that I've been working and talking to him a lot. And um, the more they build, the more expensive that they, the, the places are. The more construction, the more high prices are coming. It, it is ridiculous, actually. It is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. what, what was Rob's answer to that? He always said that they keep working, they keep working, trying to find uh, um, a middle ground where it can be, because my question was, can it be done 50, 50? So people, everybody can, can buy a place. Everybody, it doesn't matter, a condominium, a house or something that they can call their own. But I don't know, I mean, it's obvious that there's a lot of people involved in this, developers and all of that, the city. I don't know how they're gonna handle. They, his answer is always that they're working on it. They're trying for it, so. And I love Rob too, okay, so, yeah. Brandon, I saw your hand go up for a second. Did you wanna say something? Yeah, I'll, I'll be quick. Um, for me, I'm in between like uh, the developing and moderate, um, but there was one indicator that kind of stood out to me. It was HL 4.1. And it says here that they supported three home buyers in the fiscal year of 2021 that were low income. Um, I would like to see that number increased. Um, and I'd also like to see it increase. I remember when we were looking at IDA programs back when we qualified, and there was one in Hillsboro, um, and, and it was waitlisted like years. Um, for me, I, I don't have the, the knowledge to know um, what the mixed um, living income is going to look like up in, um, in that area, but with the, I'm going to assume as well that the property value in that area will, will, um, will rise. So part of that is nice in the sense that, that families will be able to, to earn generation, that, that first group of families will, will likely get some generational wealth if they were to sell. I'm not sure what the statutes look like for families to sell might be something comparable to how proud ground takes a percentage. But um, I think that uh, moving forward, if we're able to find other areas or renovate, um, and I'm not trying to go off on a tangent, but but renovate areas that are a little bit closer in um, with with services, because, you know, if we, we have we got to be mindful of the services that are surrounded in the community, right? And there has to, we don't we don't want to expect people to take the bus for hours to 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 go to work or, or go downtown. 
But um, long story short, I, I, I would like to see more um, IDA, um, first time homeowner, like generational wealth, um, opposed to large kind of tax base building um, ventures or kind of plans to pull in the rest of Washington County. Um, that's where I'm at with that. Thank you. Thanks everyone for weighing in on that one. Clearly housing is a hot topic. Uh, it's a very important issue in our region and really nationwide, globally even. Um, do people feel like they have enough information to move forward with a vote? Let's give it a try. All right, it looks like um, oops. you all can see the ratings there and you had two additional developing ratings in the chat. So that brings developing to six votes, moderate to five. So developing would win by one vote. Okay, developing it is. That was quite a roller coaster. All right, guys, we've got uh, one section left now. Um, public engagement. I do realize it is 717. Um, hopefully that preliminary voting was very, uh, a lot of consensus on that. <laughs> oh, good. Nice split. <laughs> Okay, 40% moderate, 30% developing, 20% successful, 10% significant. But looks like so far, most the most people said moderate. Um, all right, anybody want to weigh in on this one? I'd like to try to keep discussion to five minutes if possible. or if people feel like they're just ready to vote, because we did have quite a bit of discussion on this one last month. Um, perhaps people have had more time to think about it since doing their preliminary voting earlier. Do you guys just wanna vote? <laughs> Uh, okay, Alexis, I'm not getting any feedback, so uh, <laughs> let's just get it rolling for public engagement. Rochelle, it's Monday, and it was like another long day, so. <laughs> That's fair. I'm, I'm ready to be done, too. Hey, Rachel, can you do me a favor? What's that? Um, I want a little more. This one has me like mixed. Um, oh, my brain is not clear, I guess. Um, what exactly we're looking in public engagement? Is it people getting involved or? So the indicators for that one, um, 
the first one is on communications. So city communications celebrate and, ref and reflect Beaverton's diversity, promote a welcoming culture and are accessible to all. Um, the second one is outreach and engagement. So city working to build proactive long-term relationships with historically okay. underrepresented communities. Um, three is youth engagement. Um, four is leadership development and five is reflective government. Okay. I thank you so much. My yeah. brain is not good tonight. So, um, okay. I feel very good about this right now after listening to those parts, because I think the city, it is working hard and it has a progress when it comes to the diversity and it comes to the communities, reaching out to the communities, trying to get more in touch with the people. So I thank you, you clear up my mind. Thank you. Excellent. Alexis, did we have poll results from that? Um, it looks like we are just waiting for one more. Okay. Sorry, I didn't vote. <laughs> no worries. Okay. Yes, we have poll results. And so you can see in the chat, um, we had two additional votes for developing, which would bring that to four. So this one gets a moderate progress rating based on that. Okay. Okay, we've done it. Um, so Alexis, for this final vote of all six uh, final progress ratings, is this just a asking for a motion type of thing or okay so we don't need to do any more polling we're done yeah. with the polling no, I, put a, I put the ratings that you all um had in the chat um all six of them so you can take a look at that see if anybody wants to needs more discussion time or feels everybody feels okay with going ahead with the vote on that okay I'm gonna take the silence as a sign that people are ready to vote. Um, all right, so uh, do I have a motion to uh, Rachel, approve? I motion to approve the progress ratings as they have been put in the chat by our trusted staff liaison, uh, city practices being moderate, public safety being moderate, community building and inclusion, developing economic empowerment, developing housing and livability, developing public engagement, moderate. Do I have a second? I second. I... Wow, everybody seconds. <laughs> All <laughs> in favor. I... I... Can we have that on paper? Like collectively, we all like second. Is that against Robert's rules? Like, there can there be really like a limit? You know, to well, never mind. In the spirit of inclusion and equity, gosh darn it, we should all be able to second because we are all equal in this democratic body that makes moves and advises those who have been elected. We are the seconded of the electeds. You know, we were all appointed to our positions. Gosh darn it. We are liaisons in and of ourselves and we are held to higher standards than the rest of community. So you know what? Kudos to all of us for putting in work for free. That's all I have to say. Yes. Good job so to all of you. Proud of you for all of your hard work. I think that might have yeah, been the yeah, longest uh, the longest motion ever. I think that uh, <laughs> <it> was approved. <laughs> I think that motion passes. I applaud her. <laughs> um, okay, guys. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for um, 
all the work you put into reading this report. We know it was very long. We know you didn't have a super long time to do it and um, really appreciate your uh, participation in our discussions today. Obviously, it helped us come to um, a better consensus as a group. So really appreciate that. Um, we've got one more agenda item tonight. Um, we don't have much time for it, so we're going to do a quick prep for um, starting to think about our elections for 2022. Um, Alexis, is there anything that I'm missing before we just quickly go over what the roles are? No, I don't think so. Um, I think tonight we're, we're not voting, so I don't have a lot to add. Okay, um, sweet. So there are three officer positions, chair, vice chair, recorder. Uh, I will talk about chair, I'll let Teresa talk about vice chair, and then I'll ask that Anoush talks about recorder. Um, so to keep it short and sweet, chair leads and facil facilitates our meetings. Um, help plans each meeting with, um, and they sets the agenda for the meetings with uh, the leadership team, which includes the staff liaison and uh, the vice chair. Um, and then uh, on occasion, uh, the chair represents uh, the board at um, some kinds of public settings. Um, sometimes has to give a presentation to city council um, or provide testimony or something like that. Um, so you can anticipate a few uh, extra hours a month uh, if you decide to take on that responsibility. All right, Teresa, vice chair, sell it. All right, vice chair, people. Um, I back up Rachel, I am her wingman in the event that she cannot attend a board meeting, I preside over the board meeting in her absence, and I have the explicit function of uh, just making sure things run smoothly, being a helper. Uh, as you know, I am the aficionado of random facts, and so I like to use my chair opportunity and time to just kind of be the eyes and ears of knowing on what's going on in Beaverton. Obviously, I am the liaison for HTAG, and I hope to continue to be the liaison for HTAG, even though I will not be in the leadership position on DAB. So you are able to enjoy all of the amenities and privileges of leadership in name and title and attend some meetings. You can put it on your resume. You can add it to your LinkedIn. Fantastic resume builder. And with that chair, our trusty recorder, also previously known as secretary, equally important, just a changing of name, nothing fancy. Awesome. Um, so for the recorder, um, it's pretty simple. Uh, I take meeting minutes um, during all of our meetings. So the, the minutes that we approve- every Can't hear. Can't hear anything. Oh. Can you guys hear me now? Sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> um, so I, I was just saying the, the recorder responsibilities are fairly simple and straightforward. I take the meeting minutes for um, all of these meetings that we're having. So um, as we're talking through items, I generally am recording everything that we are discussing. Um, so those meeting minutes that we approve every month during our meeting at the top of the meeting um, are generally meeting minutes that I've taken. Um, and it's pretty structured and simple. Um, Alexis will send over a meeting minutes template and you just kind of fill it out as you go along and have those discussions. So um, you don't have to be like a professional note taker or anything to be <laughs> successful in this role. Um, and I also occasionally will uh, post things to any sort of um, social media type stuff, anything that we're, we are working on as far as initiatives or um, yeah, just anything that's going on in the city that we want to make the public aware of, I will post about it. So that's pretty much it. Great. Um, we sort of just gave you a little bit of background on those three officer positions because at our December meeting, our plan is to um, have a vote. Uh, 
as to who will be um, stepping into those positions starting in 2022. Um, so I want to give folks the opportunity now to um, either nominate themselves or nominate someone else um, for either of those three positions. I do want to let folks know that uh, for chair and vice chair, um, that position, those positions have to be filled by a uh, regular board member, but a recorder um, can be a regular member or an alternate. So just so you know. So is there anybody who wants to volunteer uh, to put themselves I, up for election or nominate someone else? I like to keep it the way we, have, we are right now. I like it. Unfortunately, that is that is not a, a choice. Um, Teresa uh, and myself uh, will both be um, rolling off. Monica, you have your hand up. Go ahead. Yes, I have. So can I give for the names that I want for each one? Or I have Anush, Anusha. I have Ahmed. Uh, that will be for my chair or chairperson. I also like to see Brandon there. So those are my, my three choices. Thank you, Monica. And with that, I'm going to share mine. Um, I would like to she, see Shara as vice chair. She was very close to beating me last year, if you recall. And so she is very civically engaged in all things Beaverton. She even has her hand and ear and eyes to the uh, what's going on on the main streets here, really hands-on at Twalton Hills Parks and Rec, also very fondly known as THPRD. And I'd like to see her in that role. For recorder, I'd like to see Rihanna and um, Ahmed, if you would like the chair position, it's yours, bro. So Ahmed for chair, Shara for vice chair, Rihanna for Sorry, Brianna. Brianna. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, for recorder, um, those are my recommendations. Take it or leave it. I will say those recommendations again next month. And I don't want to take up too much more time. Consider it, please do. And if it sounds good, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns about the vice chair position, please reach out to me. Any other uh, nominations here? Uh, and this isn't the last chance to nominate someone or yourself. Don't worry, this is just preliminary opportunity. So Brandon had a question in the chat, um, additional commitment. So Rachel and I meet toward the end of the month. It has alternated based on our availability the last Tuesday or Wednesday of the month and we meet just for an hour. So an additional hour, onto this meeting, obviously. And you and the vice chair and Alexis would schedule a day and time that works best for you and your schedule. And that can be flexible. As I said, our days and times have varied based on our flexibility. So it's really meant to accommodate the leadership team. I, I will also say uh, because of other things I've been pulled into with Deb, uh, it occasionally is at least more for uh, me, I have found, um, can be an extra two, three hours a month on top of that sometimes, just depending. Prep time, reading. Yeah, and I mean, sometimes presenting at other things really is uh, what the chair does too. Not to intimidate anyone, it's a it's great opportunity. It's fun to get to talk about Deb. But for vice chair, it's optional. <laughs> anyway, um, it is 7.33. I want to respect people's time. Um, we will have a chance to, to, to dive into this a little bit more. If you do have more nominations uh, in the meantime, before our next meeting, feel free to give Alexis an email, either if it's nominating yourself for something or nominating someone else. Um, I believe Alexis will probably reach out to the folks who have been nominated in the meantime to confirm uh, if you would like to accept your nomination or not. 
um, so that we have a more clear slate of folks um, running for each of the positions next month. Um, Alexis, any last tidbits uh, before we need to sign off tonight? Uh, nothing too critical. You all got your staff liaison update um, a little bit earlier in your email. Let me know if you have any questions. And um, yeah, thank you so much for your work on the DEI plan. The feedback is is really, really important and really listened to by staff. And well, I'll say by staff. <laughs> I'll speak on behalf of the folks that are, are my colleagues. Um, but we really appreciate your input. Any idea, uh, Alexis, any idea when the launching of uh... Uh, peace query is going to be? Of the what, I'm sorry? The, the naming and launching of, or official opening of uh, the Bividend Police Station. Uh, do you mean the, the plaza opening yeah. the, that you all named? I know that the sign, I saw a picture of the, of the fabricated sign the other day that was getting installed. Um, so, but I don't yet have details on the, on the actual ceremony. Um, I think not until early next year, um, but I can follow up and see when that's projected for. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thanks everyone. Wonderful meeting. Um, really, really appreciate your participation today and we'll see you next month for our last DAB meeting of the year. Take care, everyone. Have a good night. Thanks, everyone. We're still doing. <laughs>